everyone and welcome to the Restoration Hour. We hope that you've had a blessed weekend and that you had a great Shabbat. We really hope you had a great Shabbat. Uh, the weekend was so wonderful. We were really looking forward to just resting and Abba Father is really good. We got to do just that. So we want to wish you a very, very warm welcome to the Restoration Hour. We are so expecting and looking forward so, you know, Abba Father just really meeting with us and he's really given us a word on our hearts tonight to just share. And one of the things that he really said to me for this evening was, you know, I've given you a word to sustain the weary. And Abba Father knows exactly what our hearts need to hear. He knows exactly where we are at, where each one of us are positioned and situated and what we need this evening. And so I really want to just, you know, bless Yeshua for being with us knowing he is with us, knowing his presence is with us this evening or this afternoon, this morning, wherever you find yourself. So just settle in with us and just be here and let us just fellowship with Abba Father and just hear his word being ministered to us and just open up our hearts to receive what he wants to share with us today because I'm truly looking forward to having him stir up what he wants to share with us in his heart to our heart. And so may we have open hearts to receive that. Yes and amen. Yosef, welcome to you as well. And, you know, bless you for being here on this Restoration Hour. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, I'm so glad that we can be back again. Last week we were not able to broadcast and it's good to be on air again. I'm excited for this evening's broadcast, Leah. As you said, you know, it's. I think that for many of us, the times and the seasons that we find ourselves in, it's become a, a weary time for some of us. And, um, you know, sometimes we, we, we know the truth of the word. We know what Yahweh says to us, but sometimes we just need to hear encouragement again. We just need to be, you know, re, how do I say, repositioned and, and just hear the truth of his heart for us at this time. Mm -hmm. So let's pray and then let's, let's start this evening. And, and I really pray that, that this uh, restoration hour will really bless each and every one of you. Um, and that you will have an open heart this evening and that the Father will really minister and speak to you. So let's pray. Father, we want to thank you in the wonderful and powerful name of Yeshua Mashiach. Father, for your goodness, your mercy. Father, for your loving kindness. We thank you, Father, that your word says that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we want to pray this evening, Father, that as we come together, Father, whatever our needs, whatever our desires, whatever our, our heart is crying out for, I pray this evening, Father, that you will meet us at our point of need. Father, this has always been a wonderful time. It's always been a time, Father, where not only... Um, does the word get proclaimed, but Father, where, where things are changed in our hearts, Father, where you really minister into the core areas of our hearts. And that's my prayer this evening, Father, that you will minister into our hearts and help us, Father, just to be strengthened again by your voice and by your word as we continue, Father, to run this race with endurance so that we may obtain the prize. And we thank you for this in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. You know, it's it's so interesting when we consider and when we look at ourselves and we just know, you know, Abba Father is with us and what is he wanting to say to us? You know, what can we really always learn, but what can we experience and what can we take with us and what can we just have received by our hearts? And I know that, you know, I know that for you and your family, it's, well, I'm part of the family, but you know what I mean? <laughs> the, the last two weeks have 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 suddenly become quite difficult and we know that that's a big thing and it's a big reality which is part of why we weren't on the broadcast you know last week and so please keep Yosef and his family in prayer you know at this time we don't want to give like way too much information but it is quite an intense time and we know that you know it's important for us all as a spiritual family to be together and to really pray for one another and we know for many of you as well they come to the restoration hour you you yourself have you know families that need prayer and loved ones that are struggling and things that are happening and so let us keep each other in prayer for that and i think it's so important not so yes if that we really just are at a place where we just remember one another in prayer and, and it's very very important and we really lift that up to yeshua this evening and and you know what we really want to want to talk a bit about someone that we know from the scriptures that is probably a little bit well known. Do you really think that we really understand this man? <laughs> no, I don't. You know, really reflecting, everyone's like, you, you guys haven't even told us who you're talking about. We're really going to be talking about Noah. Mm this evening or Noah. Um, and you know what? It's so interesting because as I was reading, uh, doing the last two weeks, actually, the father's been leading me into, into just one part of Noah's life and really been speaking to me about this part. But what is beautiful about what happens with Abba Father, and I think it's something that a lot of people 
kind of, you know, when they come out of Christianity, they're scared to ask Yahweh questions about the word. You know, they'll sit with the word and just read it and just accept. Whereas Judaism teaches us that we must consistently ask questions. We must consistently and always be asking questions. Ask questions of the Bible. Come to what you read with a lot of questions and ask Yahweh questions. And even when great revivals broke out, you know, among Christian people over the last 100 years ago and then before that even, it was because people came together and they were asking questions of, of Yahweh and then breaking out and then praying about, about it. And then they would come back and then see what the Father was saying to them. If they didn't have the answers, they went away. They asked the questions again and they came back. And, and as I was reading about Noah, I had a lot of questions that suddenly came up in my heart. And I was saying to the Father, but well, what about this? Why is there this prophecy? Like this guy doesn't seem good because we look at Noah and we read even you know think about your readings that you've done on Noah when we are children we know about Noah and his ark and the animals that's what's important to us as we become adults we read about Noah and I remember being in a Torah group that was very quite fixated on Noah failing in the sense of like you know building a vineyard getting drunk and then that whole situation that happens which we always trying to understand but there was that fixation on that and then as you move away from that you look at Noah and it says that he was a righteous man in his generation blameless before Yahweh but people then take that and say well he's only righteous in his generation he's not as righteous as Abraham is Abraham walked fully with the father Noah was righteous but only to a certain point of righteousness so he wasn't actually a very holy person. And a lot of people look at that and then we become, you know, focused on that. But what I want to share with you today is is a, quite a few parts of what the Father has shown me and what Yosef and I have been speaking about and just sharing over with one another. And the beautiful thing is, as I asked questions of Yahweh while I was reading his word, he took days and days and days to answer me, but I consistently went back to the same chapters that I was reading. And I've been reading a lot more than what I'm going to be sharing today. But you know what? He began answering me. And that's the beautiful thing. And that's the first thing I want to say to you, that if you have something that you want to understand of the word, you know, you and, and it's something that you start reading and you don't understand in that moment, ask Abba Father. And the thing about Yahweh is that he really actually wants us to seek him. And what I've found over many, many years is that he wants there to be a pursuit. He he often doesn't just answer straight away because he's almost wanting you to pursue him. He's wanting you to no, consistently knock and seek and then you will find. You know, we can ask a question now and he may not answer us now, but he is with us. But he wants to, it's, it's kind of like he wants there to be that beloved pursuit. He wants you to come after his truth and after his heart. And when you stop and you don't pursue and come after, you, you sometimes are not going to find the answers and to those questions you have. Yeah. Now, putting aside everything we know about Noah, there's a lot more that we can learn, Yosef. You know, Leah, before you continue with that, I think that point that you just made is, is very important. I think that so many people today fail um, with that desire or fail in the pursuit of Yahweh. So often we we give up because we think, well, you know what, it's someone else's duty to get me to the place that I need to be. Or, you know, someone else is more, um, how do I say, learned in that in that place or, or they have more understanding of the word. So we'll rather listen to those people or follow after those people. Whereas Yahweh is saying, and, and I really want to stress this this evening, seek ye first the kingdom of Yahweh and all these things will be added unto you. Even if we don't have the understanding or we don't possess that knowledge Yahweh says that you don't have because you don't ask you lack wisdom because you never ask for wisdom you you lack understanding because you don't ask for understanding so when we ask Yahweh for things then Yahweh will grant those things to us but we have to be seeking and we have to be pressing on and that's important so I like you said this evening don't let someone else always you know have to be the one steering the boat you be the one and ask the father to guide you and to lead you so that you can come into as the word says come into all understanding it's important that we do that hmm. and as we learn from people who who can teach us we can put those things inside of yeah. ourselves as well and just Amen. consistently be learning hmm. and growing and i think that that's what's so beautiful 
about this process of learning Yahweh's word and his truth. Now, we know what happened with Noah. We know that he was preaching the word in, you know, the word being that there is a flood coming and everybody needs to repent. Mm -hmm. You know, for a very, very, very long time, he was consistently proclaiming that. And while he was building the ark that Yahweh had told him to build, we know that then, you know, the people don't repent. It's a very long time. What, what is actually very beautiful, we're going to touch on Lamech this evening as well. Noah's father, Lamech, was a, a good person, was also a righteous person in his generation. We don't know a lot about him from the Bible, but he was around. And what was great and what is gracious, and I think it's one of the things we can learn this evening as well, point number one, was that Lamech named Noah something specific. You know, he named his son and he walked with the father and he was a good man. And because of Yahweh's grace and mercy upon his life, he was taken away just five years before the flood came. And so we know that Noah obviously lost his father just five years before the flood came. But that was Yahweh's grace on Lamech's life, saying that you're not going to witness this. You know, I'm going to take you away before the bad things come upon the earth. Mm. You know, I'm going to I'm going to spare you from that. I'm going to take you to be with me. And, and that's how it was. And he extended that mercy to Lamech and to his life. And so Noah is just consistently preaching, even though... His life is going through normal phases. He He's losing family member. You know, he's watching people ridicule him. He's trying to do the right thing. He's walking with Yahweh every day. He's building the ark, probably through a lot of his own questions of how am I going to get all these animals in? How is this going to happen? There was no rain upon the earth. We know for all those hundreds Sorry. and hundreds of years. And so there was... It, you know, we know the story. And so then when Yahweh decided that was the day, he said to Noah, go into the ark. And when Noah goes in, all the animals go in, his wife goes in, his children go in, and the floodwaters open up. And there is that tempest that just comes upon the earth. And everything, all life ceases. We know from the word, actually, that it doesn't say that all the animals in the ocean died. So it was very, very probable that they didn't die. Part of why, you know, the animals on the earth had to die was because there was a great perversion that was going on at that time. So obviously that wasn't happening with the animals in the ocean. So it was very possible that they were still alive. But we do know that the storm was there and it continued and the rain and everybody, you know, died and the waters covered the highest mountain peaks and everything must have been incredibly difficult and hard and terrible. And I think if we just pause for a moment to consider what this man has just been through, mm. not just that that consistently preaching the word for close to a hundred years and people ridiculing him and not accepting the word, but he must have witnessed death. Mm. He witnessed it. You know, there were people probably knocking on the boat, screaming outside, saying, let us in, let us in, when the waters started rising. That's right. It must have been a very, very hard time. Can you imagine being Noah and, and just literally being inside the ark and hearing people you know from your own city, your own town, maybe distant family members, maybe friends that you know you, you once had by your home, banging on that wood outside, screaming, let me in, let me in. Noah, help us. Noah, help us. Can you imagine the weight of that grief and that pain and him just almost you know he must have just held his head in his hands and he must have wept because think about the intensity of what he's experiencing mm. and the depth of what it actually costs to be obedient when Yahweh calls us to something and the loss that we endure in our lives to be fully obedient to what he calls us to do Sometimes that's what it looks like. Yeshua said that. He said that, you know, if we want to follow him, we've got to pick up our cross and we've got to walk daily with him. And sometimes it's going to cost. But on the other side of that, the blessing is I am being obedient to what the Father is telling me to do. Noah, even though the, he must have felt so much in that moment, the, he must have also known inside of himself that this is what obedience looks like. But it's really, really hard. And I think that it was a very heavy time. You know, you're witnessing so many things. And then the ark is lifted up on the water, Yosef, and there it goes. And it just bobs 
we know for like weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and Noah at that time what is he doing he's in the ark he's feeding animals he's getting rid of the the poop you know that the animals are making and all he's doing is shoveling poop there and you know feeding them and really must have been trying to just be like Yahweh speak to me Yahweh speak to me help my heart give me the strength give me the energy give me the life within myself that I need you know Leah I think that like you said we don't we read the story and and we you know from a young from a young age we've heard you know the story of Noah being spoken and proclaimed but I think that what we forget is exactly what you said the fact that Noah preached for nearly close to 100 years now imagine the generation of people that were around during that time that he was proclaiming there was millions of people upon the earth and and Yahweh says that he was sad in his heart because everybody was defiling themselves but the amount of people that must have known who Noah was what this man was doing walked past him every single day saw this boat that this guy was busy making and thought that this guy is crazy and yet the moment that that water began to fall it was as if I believe every single person realized at that moment what this man had been doing and that his obedience had actually been, you know, truthful and it was paying off. But there was nothing they could do. There was no way that you could get in. And I think that for us, I think, you know, there's two sides to this because being a righteous man in his generation, Noah saw the wickedness. And I feel that, you know, even us today, as we are in the world, you know, we see the wickedness and we see what is going on. And we have to continually ask the Father to renew our hearts and to help our hearts. You know, Noah, in that moment, uh, I, I feel like there's this there's this fleshly side that, that we forget. You know, just as we get, you know, angry at the things that we see and the injustices that go on. And, and you know, the word says, don't let your anger cause you to sin. Noah was seeing so much wickedness upon the earth mm. and while he's building it people were mocking him, people were laughing at him but yet you know he still had to remain a righteous person during all that was happening and not allow his heart to become so bitter and so um, full of resentment and have that attitude almost of like well you do, you're getting what you deserve. I don't believe that was how he was at all and so, so often we land up like that where we feel that, you know, the world is so bad, people are so bad. So when bad things happen, it's kind of like, well, you know, judgment's happening, you're getting what you deserve. I don't believe that Noah was like that at all. In it all, I still believe that he had this heart on, and the sadness and, and this, 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 this feeling because we know, and, and we're going to speak about it as we go on, you know, as you said, he bobs upon the ocean. It must have been intense being on that water alone, just with your family and these animals. And then as the water, you know, goes we see the next thing that Noah does and, and, and what he does how important that is and, and it's important for us to understand that his heart was in the right place hmm. you know yes that's so true what you're saying because I know in this generation there's a lot of people that get upset about the things that they see and it's easy to be you know respond in, in an emotion that could be judgmental or bitter or angry or one of self-righteousness or one of like are oh, you guys just all doing that I'm doing this because this is right and and I, I also don't believe Noah was like that and in order to have this incredible mercy and for Yahweh to really choose you meant that your heart really must have been in the right place mm -hmm. and you know it does say in Genesis 8 that the waters flooded the earth for 150 days but Yahweh remembered Noah and all the animals that were with him in the ark and he mm -hmm. sent the wind over the earth and the waters receded you know um, the rabbis actually say that Noah showed such mercy to the animals in in the ark that Yahweh remembered that mercy over and over again that's why it says in the Torah that he remembered Noah and the animals the, and and again I'm just going to pause and say that this is how much love Yahweh has for the creation he's not just interested in human beings he's interested in the animals he wanted them to be there he wanted them to be upon the earth he wants us to look after them as well and he saw what Noah was able to do in the ark and and how beautiful that was and he remembers it and it's not that he ever forgot them. It was just that what what Yahweh witnessed 
in nowhere and what was happening in the ark also just caused him to to respond and there's a newness that happens here Yosef if you read this it says he caused a wind to to come upon the waters and to to just begin to move the waters and recede very much like Genesis chapter 1 where it says the spirit of Yahweh is hovering was hovering upon the water and just created you know just divided the light and the darkness not so the evil is now here with Noah it's gone it's been washed away so the spirit of Yahweh it really is the spirit of Yahweh that hovers on the water and is going to just create this whole new reality that's going to come into being and a very important point that we are really going to touch on this evening is in Genesis 8 and it's found here we go in verse 18 I've got so many Bibles here so Noah came out he's coming out of the ark Noah came out together with his sons and his wife and his wife's sons all the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground and all the birds everything that moves on the earth came out of the ark one kind after another then verse 20 says then noah built an altar to yahweh taking some of all the clean animals and the clean birds he sacrificed burnt offerings on it and yahweh smelt the pleasing fragrance and said in his heart never again will i curse the ground because of human beings even though every inclination of humans are evil from childhood but never again will i destroy all living creatures as i have done i want to pause here to bring this to your attention Noah has just been through what we described. Mm -hmm. He witnessed everybody dying. And then he had to face his own internal fears of bobbing on this water for 150 days. Then another 40 when he sends out, you know, the raven. Then he sends out the dove. He sends it out. No, no must have been thinking. I hope I built this thing right. <laughs> <laughs> I hope my plans are. I hope my plans are right because, man, if I was bobbing on that water for so long in a boat like that, and I was thinking to myself, did I build this thing right? I mean, he's human. I mean, imagine what's going through his mind. He knows that that Yahweh is with him, but still, at the same time, I mean. He must have been thinking, just don't leak, just don't, mm. leak, just don't leak. There must have been so many thoughts that, that were going mm. through his mind. But what is the very first thing that he does when he gets out of the ark? If I start crying like spontaneously tonight while I'm saying this to you, it is because this became so real to me over the last two weeks. You know, the first thing Noah does as he's encountered grief and pain and mourning and fear, the loss of life, tempers, crazy situations is he builds an altar to Yahweh. He's not building an altar because he's afraid. Mm -hmm. He's building an altar because he wants to be close to the Most High God. And you know what? It's like when we go through these, these hard times and these intense moments in our lives, what is our heart posture? Mm -hmm. Noah's heart posture was to build an altar so that he could become close to Yahweh, so that he could communicate with the Most High. Sacrifices at this point, the kind of sacrifices that he's offering, these are not sin sacrifices. These are not sin offerings. These are free will offerings. These are offerings that he's making not to appease God because that's not what the offerings were about. That is not how Yahweh gave the offerings. It wasn't about a vengeful, angry God that had to be appeased no it was about a god that wanted a heart that was sacrificed and he wanted to be close to us and that sin separated him from us even there you know right in noah's generation and so noah builds an altar and he offers these beautiful sacrifices and what does it say it says that yahweh smelled the pleasing fragrance firstly noah's gift and noah's offering Please the heart of God. Imagine that for a moment that you do something today that that Yahweh alone is so, so touched and so moved by you alone, by the, the word you shared with a neighbor, by the food that you gave to someone, by the gift that you gave to someone, by the obedience that you're walking out in your life over the last month, year, whatever it may be, that what you are doing is alone touching the heart of Yahweh. Imagine, this is the, the God of everything. This is the King of Kings. This is the God who created the universe and and yet you as an individual have the power and the ability to do something that can please his heart. Imagine pleasing the heart of Yahweh. This is powerful because Noah's heart posture was just to connect. 
It was to be with Yahweh in, in such a close, intimate way to say, I'm building this altar. Every time the patriarchs wanted to connect with Yahweh, what did they do, Yosef? Built altar, they yeah. built an altar. Mm. It's why Abraham built altars and Isaac and Jacob. They built altars. And what happened? Yahweh made covenants with them upon those altars, not because of the animal that was there, but because of the heart that led them to sacrifice. You know, Noah has encountered so much pain in his life, but yet his heart is to offer a sacrifice, to make an altar because God, I just want to be close to you. I'm really not cared about anything else. And you know what, hey, it's so powerful because what happens, Noah was doing this because it was just in his heart to do. But because of what he did, Yahweh decides that he's never, ever, ever, ever going to kill you or me through a flood again. That just blows my mind. One person makes one offering because he loves the Father. And because of that, and it happened thousands of years ago, Yahweh says, I'm not going to kill Yosef. I'm not going to kill Leah. I'm not going to kill anybody else through a flood again because my servant Noah loves me. How powerful is that? It is life-changing. Because one person was stirred to overcome and to love the Father, all of us have been blessed. But there's one more thing that I'm going to say before we go to a song. It actually says, and this is what's so interesting, it says that Yahweh said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of man. And even though every inclination of his heart is evil, never again will I destroy all living things. You see, Yahweh responded to what Noah was doing, and he was going to never, ever destroy us again. But here's the thing sometimes about our walk with the Father. It says here that Yahweh said in his heart. In other words, right here where Noah does this beautiful thing, Yahweh actually doesn't tell him. Mm. Yahweh doesn't say to Noah, you know what you've just done right now has changed everything for everybody. And I want to encourage you with that today as well. Mm. Sometimes we do things in this life that Yahweh leads us to do. We do the obedience, but also sometimes we just do things from our heart and it's good. And it kind of seems sometimes like, like why or what is the purpose of this? Or is there any, anything that comes from what I'm doing? But Yahweh said in his heart that because of what Noah had done, he was going to change everything. And I want you to know that sometimes because of your small act of obedience, even just an act of obedience of praying, maybe even, doesn't even have to be what you do for others. It could be what you do between you and the Father. It can really change everything, can change everything for everyone. Imagine if a prayer that you pray today is, is the prayer that is going to impact people over the next hundred years. We always talk about it, but it's possible because nowhere... Noah did that, and he changed everything for everybody. Amen. You know, Leah, I want to say this evening, if you're listening, you know, this, what we're talking about, I, I can, we cannot deny that it is of utmost importance right now in this time that we're in. And, you know, Leah, like you said, we need to get to a point where we realize that what we do matters, that everything that we do in this life matters. That the Father looks at us continually and, and He sees what we do, whether, whether others acknowledge it. But we need to remember, just like Noah, Noah was building that ark to save people. Even though they were not with him, he was still building it in the hope that others would be saved. And, and he wasn't actually doing it, if you think about it, he was doing it with, a, with this idea or with this, this knowledge of knowing that this boat was not only going to save you know, the animals, but hopefully it was going to save some of the people too. And he never knew if there was going to be one or two or none. He never knew, but he continued to be obedient in what the father had asked him to do, despite the fact that he never knew. He never knew if anything that he was doing was actually going to make a difference. And so often we can preach, we can share the word, we can tell somebody about the love of Yeshua. And as you said, you don't see the seed that is sown today because for one, the scripture tells us, to one is given the duty to sow, to another something else. But Yahweh is the one that waters. It's him that will do what needs to be done in the end, whether it be five years from now, two years from now, or a hundred years from now. Noah never knew if anybody was going to get in the boat with him, but he never stopped preaching. He never stopped having that hope that maybe one person would be saved. He never stopped believing that Yahweh could do it. 
He believed that if he built this thing and he was obedient, then he was going to be able to hopefully get one or two people saved. So even though nobody got on, we know that that was, you know, Yahweh said that everybody was, you know, was evil, but he never knew that. He did what the Father asked. So in this generation that we are in right now, the scriptures tell us in Matthew, it says that, you know, the days before Yeshua's return will be like the days of Noah. We are living in times right now that are wicked, defiled, and so, so contaminated. But in this time, Yahweh is looking for Noah. He's looking for a man or a woman that will act like a Noah in this generation, obedient but also have that 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 mercy and love and justice for what is right and not for what is wrong not to be and that's what's so important Aliyah. i think that we forget this to be the bride of yeshua or or to be his people we have to have those garments of righteousness noah chose not to be defiled and and at that time remember they were mixing their seed with everything that was defiled noah's seed was pure noah's seed was still righteous noah's seed was still holy so in a in a spiritual concept for us today we are not supposed to mix with the spirit of the age we are not supposed to mix with the things of this world and it is so difficult because everything today is so geared at mixing and 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 messing us up that's why it's so important to understand the commandments of yahweh and what he considers as holy and profane So, brothers and sisters, I hope that what we've been speaking about so far, I know that it's moved me. I know that it's speaking to me. So, let's go to a song. And when we come back, let us continue with this topic. Mm. Come back to the Restoration Hour. I absolutely love that song, Song of My Father. And you know what? Today, as I was praying about, we were praying about what songs to play. That song was really on on our hearts. So, you know, I hope that it blessed you. And welcome back to the Restoration Hour. We are talking through Noah and this beautiful reality of what's happening. I, I, I really want to say this to you, something that's on my heart while we were listening to the song that, you know, Abba Father just really laid on my heart to say. And Psalm 139 says, you know, that he knit us together in our mother's womb. He knows us before we have even lived. You know, he he knows the days before us. He knows who we will be. He knows what he wanted us to be called, what he wanted us to be named. He knows every single thing about us. And he also says in, in the word, he says in Isaiah 43, he says that I call you by name. You are mine. You are chosen by me. And, and yeah, we want you to know that this evening, that he knit you together in your mother's womb, that he wanted you here on this earth, that it was his plan to bring you forth in this world. And he also says that I know you, I know you by name, you are mine, I've called you, I've chosen you, and, and I love you, and I've given people in, in exchange for your life alone. And Yahweh says that, you know, he really loves you today, and he wants you to know that. He wants you to know that you belong to him. And you know, as we as we just consider one more thing about Noah and his life, it's found in Genesis 5. And when Noah was born, his father Lamech was, you know, had had quite a lot of children already. And he was actually, you know, he was actually quite, well, okay, we would consider it old, but maybe it was young at that stage. But in, in Genesis 5, you know, verse 29, it says, that Lamech had lived 182 years when he had a son. No, no, he was young for that time. I mean, come on. <laughs> he, <laughs> I was, mean, he was like... Yeah, he, he was just, you know, so young. 50 years old to us. <laughs> no, probably about 20 because yeah. it says that, you know, Adam lived like a thousand well, something. something. Yeah. So there was probably, they were probably like, dude, you're in your prime, you know. <laughs> this is the great time to have a son. And he was 182 years old when he had a son. And Lamech named his son Noah, or in Hebrew, Noah. And he said that the son will comfort us in the labor and painful toil of our hands caused by the ground that Yahweh has cursed. He will bring us this comfort. Now, you know, we know Noah obviously means comfort, relief, rest, you know, just this kind of rest. And Lamech, it, it's very, very interesting because I sat with this and I thought, okay, this is beautiful. This father had very high hopes for his son. You know, he's going to give us comfort and rest from the ground that Yahweh had cursed. He's going to he's gonna bring us rest from this. And I'm thinking, how? You know, because Noah doesn't really seem to bring us that rest. You know, when we look at him in the word, we just see, you know, all these lovely things about him. 
and and not so lovely things about him and then and then i think to myself where and how and that was one of the questions i asked Yahweh: why there's this prophecy spoken about noah you know when he is born his father has this hope and dream for him we know what children are named specifically throughout the scriptures is very very important to who they would become And it's so interesting because we know that Adam and all the generations, all his children after him and his grandchildren, his great grandchildren, all of them. I mean, we have Adam and Seth and Jared and Enoch and Methuselah and Lamech and a whole bunch of other guys in the middle there. You know, my genealogy, I cannot (laughs) recite from, from memory, but you know, they're all in there and they're all living at the same time. Mm. They all living at the same time, right down to Lamech. And they're learning from one another and they're talking and they're like, Adam, how was it in the garden? And he's explaining and, and all this history and all this truth and all their interactions with Yahweh, they're sharing between one another. Even Enoch was mm. there and he was a really good man that walked with the father. Isn't Noah, isn't Noah even alive still and when Abraham's around? Exactly. So and that I think would come we, later. We forget to understand that they lived for such a long time and, and that they, they kind of overlap. So the knowledge and, and the spiritual depth that they had, that they shared with one another, must have been amazing. Mm. I think that we, we forget that, that, you know, Noah comes and he, and he starts, you know, this whole life, but then he's alive while other people that we read about in the scriptures are also alive. Mm. And all of these people are alive, but actually what happens is that that Adam passes away, you know, just before Noah is born. So it's very, very interesting because the curse on on the garden was given obviously to Adam and Eve and because of the fall and because of the sin, we know that obviously then Yahweh cursed the ground because of them. I want to say that nowhere actually in the curse, if you go and read it again in Genesis, does Yahweh curse man and woman. And I want to say that very clearly because I've heard a lot of teachings where people will say, you know, Yahweh cursed Adam and Eve. He did not curse Adam and Eve. He says the ground was cursed because of their sin. And then he just says that the woman would have this, you know, labor pains and she would have this desire for a husband and that. But then he also says that to Adam, you would bring forth these things through hardships. But it never says that he curses them. He didn't curse his own, you know, beloved. He didn't curse Adam and Eve. He didn't curse them. He loved them. He wanted them to experience redemption. He cursed the ground and that was a problem for the people at that time and you know what actually happens and i read it to you lamech wanted and experienced this reality of saying noah was coming forth to bring us comfort and to somehow undo this curse that was put on the ground Noah is the first person that is born after Adam dies. And what happens in Genesis 8, right there, I read it to you earlier on, when Noah comes out of this ark and offers this gift on the altar and it pleases Yahweh, what happens? And this was the question that I asked of Yahweh and he showed me this in his word. Yahweh himself says here in verse 21, never again will I curse the ground because of man. Never again will I curse the ground because of man. Right here, he says that, You know, never again will I destroy all living things. As long as the earth endures, sea time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease before me. Noah did. The prophecy that was spoken over his life from his father Lamech about who he would become. Maybe Lamech saw prophetically what would happen. Maybe not because of the the ark, he didn't see that. But he saw prophetically in his spirit, I believe, that Yahweh had a plan Mm. and that this son would undo that. And because Yahweh was, you know, interacting with Noah, it was through Noah's offering and through Noah's heart. Yahweh had witnessed Noah's obedience to preach, build the ark, have mercy, care for the animals, come out the ark, offer this gift on the altar, want to be close to the father. And he saw Noah's heart. And because of that, he undid the curse. It actually says, and now rain will fall on the earth. Now there will be a seed and harvest time. We also know that during the time of, of, you know, when the ark was on the water before this, that the rain stopped. It says that in the Bible. So there was no rain on the earth for quite a long time. We know when Noah came out that everything changed. And everything changed because Yahweh was no longer going to curse the ground. We don't know what that curse of the ground actually even looked like because we don't experience it today because it stopped because of Noah, because of his generation, because of what he did and his actions. And again, what if what we do 
changes everything. And I want to say to you today that, you know what, Yahweh, I started off by saying something that Yahweh laid on my heart to say, where he says, I've called you by name, you are mine. The name that he calls you and the, and the word that he speaks over your life is true and it will come to pass. Yahweh knows who he has created you to be. He knew who he created Noah to be. His father prophetically was in a right relationship with Yahweh, thankfully, so that he could see, so Lamech could see prophetically who his son would become. For many of us, myself included, we didn't have parents that were like that. They couldn't prophetically see who we would become. But when we get saved and we believe in Yeshua, he calls us by a new name and he says to us, I know who you are going to become. I know the plans I have for you, declares Yahweh. These are plans to prosper you, to give you a hope and a future. This is what he says about each of us. He says, I know who you're going to become and I know what you are going to do. In Noah, the curse was removed of the ground. The ground curse was removed. And then Yahweh initiates the renewal. You know, we always say that, you know, we can thank Adam and Eve for being here. And we, we can thank them because they are our original parents. But it was really through Noah because in Genesis 9, it says, Then Yahweh blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, increase in number and fill the earth. Hear yeah, that 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 Amen. blessing, that reality that was spoken to Adam and Eve right at the beginning, it's here spoken to Noah, to him and his family, it says that you need to go and do this now. The covenant blessing and the promise and everything, it's with you now. You need to do this so that you can recreate a better world, a world that is in connection with me. You know, a world that Yahweh wanted to see live with him. And Yahweh chose to do that through individuals. He actually didn't, eventually he would choose to do that with Israel. But for many, many generations, he chose one righteous man and one righteous woman. And like you said, mm. Noah was alive and in Ab when Abraham was alive. Abraham was 50 years old when Noah died. We don't know if they know each knew each other. We don't know that. But what we do know is that the, if they might have, you know, Noah could have shared stories. Definitely the story of the flood was known by the people in that time. Definitely. They would have known what happened. And so we know then that Yahweh decides he's going to work with Abraham. We see the beauty of the relationship he has with Abraham. But Noah really was someone whose heart we can learn from. We know that he made mistakes as well. And that's that's also something that we can learn from. We are all human beings and we do make mistakes. We mustn't get super tough on ourselves. I know sometimes for some of us, you know, you, you, you do something wrong and, and you let it just really beat you up for a very long time. You let it guilt you for a long time. You let it shame you for a long time. Even if it wasn't, you know, a big thing, maybe you thought something in your mind or, you know, you said something in anger and then you're suddenly upset with yourself for a whole week and you haven't prayed and you, you can't let yourself just be. You can't let yourself just be with the Father. You know what? We know that we all make mistakes because Noah made mistakes as well. But there was a person that Noah was destined to become. And he became that person because not only was he obedient, but also because he had a heart after the Father. And that is the difference, Yosef. You know, erecting that altar and offering that sacrifice was not commanded. It was commanded of Noah to get into the ark. Right. But Yahweh didn't say, now you build me an altar and you offer me a sacrifice. And lastly, what I'm going to say is that Noah got out the ark and he did build the altar and he did offer that sacrifice. And he was able to offer that sacrifice and able to do this beautiful thing because Yahweh had already provided for him. You know, there were seven pairs of clean animals that went into the ark because Yahweh knew that if, you know what, if Noah does maybe want to offer something to me or just wants to be close to me or just wants to offer a sacrifice, I'm going to make provision for that. So every good deed that we have to do in our lives, every act of obedience, Yahweh has already provided for. I believe that. Mm -hmm. I believe that every time we have to bless someone else, he's already given us the capacity to do that. If we need to give of ourselves, it may not look like it in that moment that maybe we, we have what it takes or we feel weary in our emotions. How can we preach the word? You know, if we're feeling down, how can we do this if we do that? Or Yahweh is there and he's the one providing for us. And I, I said to you earlier on that Yahweh said in his heart that what Noah had did was good and that, that you know, he's going to 
give this beautiful sign and you know he would do all these beautiful things and i said to you that in that moment he never spoke to noah yeah. he never told noah that that noah's gift and noah's love had changed everything but you go on to read in genesis 8 and 9 that yahweh actually does tell noah he does say to him that i'm making this covenant with you and because of of what you've done i'm i'm going to do this so we need to keep on doing the good thing. Yahweh does want to encourage our hearts when we do the good thing. He might not tell us in that moment that, you know, oh, Aaliyah, like what you've done has blessed me so much. Here's a blessing for you. He might not say it in that moment, but he is pleased. And we just keep on doing what he's called us to do. And one day he will also say, you know what? I want to bless you because you've blessed me so many times. That for me you know what, the, the ability that maybe we have to bless, we, we definitely do have it, but this ability to bless Yahweh, we always see Yahweh as the one who blesses us. Mm. When we think of blessings, we think of us praying and us receiving and Yahweh giving, but it's actually not so because we can bless him. That was the purpose of, of many of the offerings in the Old Testament. Free will offerings were to bless him. So if you have the opportunity, you know, whatever that may look like, your prayer could bless the Father. Don't think of it as, as you being blessed just alone and receiving. That is part of it. But you spending time with him could be a huge blessing to Yahweh. We have the ability to, to be a gift to the Most High. No other religion uh, ever has ever had that ability to do that we have that Yeshua made that way for us and he also wants us just to be with him to be with the father and to have that connection with him and it's so beautiful Yosef just to think about that amen you know Leah it reminds me of what it says in Romans that we are to present ourselves as a living sacrifice you know that's what worship is all about it's worship it's about us giving back to Yahweh it's not always about us just grabbing and receiving and taking I think that as believers in Messiah Yeshua, we need to remember that. And we need to understand, too, that it's us that has to present ourselves as a living sacrifice. You know, Noah presented himself, he presented a sacrifice to Yahweh, but we need to present ourselves. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, it becomes like a sweet-smelling fragrance to Yahweh. And that's what he wants. He wants us to, to offer ourselves to him, to present ourselves to him on a daily basis, and also to walk with him and to trust him. And I feel like, you know, as you said, you know, Noah's generation was wicked. But, but at the same time, when we, when we read what it says in Matthew, it says that like the days of Noah, we always want to look at the bad. We always want to look like, okay, so it's going to be really, really bad. Yes, it is. But if Noah was the man that was righteous in his generation and there was only one, then I really do believe that in this generation there is many Noahs. There are many people that will be used by Yahweh in this generation. So we have to rejoice and be glad for that. That even though, you know, wickedness is prevalent and things are going bad, you know, it says in the in the word the days will be like the days of Noah. So in the day of Noah, Noah was there. So we have to believe that there will be others. And it's important for us then to prepare ourselves and to ask the Father, how can we be as a Noah in our generation? How can we be obedient? How can we build that ark? You know, whatever it might be that the Father has for you to do, how can we do that with all that he has given us? And how can we also, as you said, when times are tough, when, when it feels like you're just bobbing on the water and you don't know where you're going, but you know that you are obedient, then are you going to offer that sacrifice? Are you going to present yourself to Yahweh and say, here I am, I'm here and I'm presenting myself. We don't present, you know, we, we don't necessarily now have to go and, you know, find a bird like Noah did, but we should be the one on the altar and say, Yahweh, here I am. Here I am and thank you for what you've done. Thank you for giving me the ability to share your word. Thank you for, for doing these things through my life for your glory and for your kingdom. That's what he wants. He's looking for people like that in this generation. Mm. You know, as you were talking, Yosef, I just, I just want to say, I'm going to say one thing <laughs> that Yahweh laid on my heart, and then, and then we're going to go to our final song of the evening. You know, as I was, as I was just sitting here, and I don't think this is something I've ever done on the Restoration Hour yet, but I, I just felt really Yahweh say to me for my release that Yahweh has really given you a, a specific name that He has called you. And, and this name that he has renewed over and over and over again to you. And, and you know, it, it so speaks of, of that woman that walked with Yeshua so closely. 
that woman that was the one that witnessed his resurrection first, the one that was called the apostle to the apostles, the one that went and had to tell the good news of Yeshua to to her brothers and, and her sisters and to everybody else. And, and I felt like Yahweh was really reminding me of that and saying, saying to you to read Isaiah 43 and to really just know that he has called you by name and that you are his and he has given you the name that you had, even prophetically, you know, even from the beginning of your life, he has called you by that name and, and has said that this is who I want you to be. This is, this is what I have for you. You know, that woman, she, you know, Mary Magdalene was, was so so she was a single woman and we know that she traveled around with with Yeshua and she gave of herself to him and I believe that that is that that is is what the how the father sees you and who he wants you to be and the name that he has chosen for you and who he has called you to so fully be at his feet with him and so so I just feel like he wants to remind you of that again this evening and to know that you are his and, and that and that he is yours and that he loves you and that he has given so many people in exchange for your life alone and that you are his beloved and and the apple of his eye and the one that he looks upon and the one that he watches over and that he keeps Keeps close to him and close to his side and that his eye is always upon you no matter no matter what you're doing and no matter where you are in your life that his eye is is consistently upon you it's never ever moved and it never will move and so I know that our father also wants you to embody who you need to become through all the prophecies spoken over your life and through all the words spoken but the the ones that he put in place from the very day that you were born that the enemy tried to rob from you and tried to steal from you because the enemy had a plan to destroy you because Yahweh has such a powerful plan for for this anointing of your life for you to be a light for you to be the one that shines this beacon of love and hope to so many people but mostly you know for you to just be close to him in, in this love and this connection this closeness with Yeshua that not everybody has and so so I just pray a blessing over you Maranis that you will be blessed and that Abba Father will just fully come and just reassure you in every single way of every single thing that you need today that he will reassure you and touch you and love you and that his word will become such a real real reality in your life and I just encourage you to read Isaiah 43 and, and to just meditate on what he is saying to you and we just thank Yeshua so much that, that he loves us and we thank Yeshua so much for your life as well and so we're going to go to a song right now called First Love. When we get back, we do want to pray for you. So stick around. If you do have prayer requests, please put them down and then we'll pray together. Father, we just want to thank you so much for this restoration hour this evening. Father, we want to thank you for the life of Noah and that we can learn so much from him. Father, we thank you that in this generation that you truly are looking for people, Father, that will stand up, that will be people, Father, of your presence, but also people of obedience, Father, people who will present themselves to you, Father, as a vessel to be used for your glory and for your presence. So, Father, help us in this time that we find ourselves in, Father, not to be entangled by the things of this world, Father, but to renew our minds on a daily basis and allow your Spirit, Father, to live within us, to make a place, Father, an altar where you can dwell, Father, a mercy seat within our heart where you can come and really inhabit the praises of your people. And Father, this evening we want to thank you for the word that went out, but we also want to thank you, Father, for every individual that has joined us and those that will join later, Father, and listen to the playback. We really pray, Father, that no matter what they are going through, Father, no matter the things and the storms that they're facing, Father, whether it be their family, their finances, their lives, Father, we ask in the name of Yeshua, Father, that you will really intervene in the areas of people's lives, Father, where they need you to intervene. 